Hey guys, today I'm making a video on how I do webtoon backgrounds. Um, I originally wanted to make this video a long time ago, but I think what was stopping me is the fact my art changes so often and I'm always trying new things. Like for example, for the first chapter, I drew every background and then I started using 3D objects and then I started using SketchUp. So I'm just always experimenting with different things. But I'm just going to make a video on how I currently do it and if I change methods in a couple months, I'll just make an updated video. At first, I was just going to color a living room like I did in my last video, but I realized actually coloring a background with characters in them will be way more useful to a majority of people, so I'm going to show my process for that. And in this video, I'll go over three different ways to make and use backgrounds for your webtoon or comic. The first way is converting 3D objects to lines and then coloring. The second is using pre-made already colored backgrounds. And then the third is using special effects and other simple backgrounds. For most of my webtoon backgrounds, I do them in Clip Studio Paint X because of the convert to lines and tones feature. In my previous video, I went over how to create a background with 3D objects and how to get them converted into line art. So I'll just link that in the description or the top card thingy, but let's just get started. The first example I'll show is using 3D objects converted into line art. And for that, I'm using this panel of a character from my webtoon. I already did flat colors because my coloring process after doing line art is first flat colors, then background, shading, and then lastly adding lights and effects. I drew two frames just to make it look like how it would be when you're making a page and I also drew some balloons but I usually do those last so I'm going to hide them before I get started. On the left here you can see how I arrange my folders. I have one for line art, one for colors, one for random things like the balloons is in here which I'm going to turn off. And then lastly, one for all of the backgrounds and also make sure that the background folder is below all the others. Clip Studio has this frame feature where you can draw a frame where you will be able to only draw within that frame. And that just saves so much time because you don't have to crop and cut your backgrounds. Now when you color on this layer below it, it'll only be within that frame. If your characters are going to be in a room or place a lot, I highly recommend making the rooms beforehand and also all of these objects I downloaded from the asset store. If you're going to be using a room a lot, you should register it as a material so you don't always have to have the file open and you don't have to copy and paste a lot. To do that, click edit, register material, image, and then just name your room and choose where you want to save it. You can see the room that I just saved, so from here you can just drag it into your scene. From here you basically just need to work on getting the angle to look right and it's really easy to change the view with these buttons. If you want to see what it looks like just click off of the layer. So now that I have the background at the angle that I want we can now convert it to line art. So to do that you click layer, convert to lines and tones. The settings for this is entirely up to you. You can click preview and play around with what looks best for your comic. Sometimes your lines will look jagged like this, but there's an easy fix for that later. Once you get it to how you like it, just click OK, and it might take a couple seconds. So it made a couple of layers, two of which are line art, which I just merge. Also hold down on the layer and convert it to a color layer. The other ones I don't really use most of the time, so I'm just going to delete them. Now to fix these jagged lines, go to filter, blur, and smoothing. And there we go. This is before, after. So I cleaned up the background a little bit, but now we can move on to coloring. I will usually just color pick, but a good rule of thumb I found is to stay on the top left side of the color wheel. The most important thing though is to make sure your background is less saturated than your character, because if it's overly saturated, it'll be overwhelming to the reader because they won't know where to look. 
but that's entirely dependent on what your comic looks like. If you want to use saturated colors, then by all means, it's your comic, not mine. Also, I use the bucket fill tool with refer to other layers to do base colors. Now to color, I'll just create a layer above the line art. I'm going to finish the window part in a second, but for now, this is what it looks like. I'm all done with the colors for my background. There is one final step for the line art. You can see that something still looks a little bit off, like he's not really blending into the background, and that's because the line art colors are not the same color or size. Color pick the color you want, so in this case, I'm color picking his brown line art. Then make sure that you have the background line art layer selected. Go to edit, convert to drawing color. Then to make the line art thicker, go to filter, correction, adjust line width. And I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Now for the window, I want it to be early morning-ish, but because I'm extra, I'm going to import another 3D object and then follow the same process of converting into line art and then coloring, so let me do that really quick. And there we go, now it looks like he lives across the street from a cafe. From here I move on to basic shading. I have multiple layers for his colors, which is why it's helpful to put them all into a folder, because I can just make a new layer and clip it to the folder and then shade over everything. For shading color, I color pick whatever color I'm shading. So for example, his skin here, I will color pick then put the layer on multiply and lower the opacity and i also do the same thing for the background Now I'm finished with cell shading everything. I'm sure I'm going to watch this back and see spots that I missed, but for now, this is what it looks like. From here, we can move on to lighting and effects. This is the primary reason why I do base colors for both the background and my character first, because I can really then later pay attention to where the light hits him, where it's coming from, where it'll be dark, where to hi add highlights, and all of that. Make a layer above every other folder and layer, but if we just do this here without doing anything, it'll go outside the frame. So what we need to do is select this rectangle,
and now when you do your airbrush it'll stay inside For the final coloring step, I'm going to add highlights on an add glow layer. And from here, you're pretty much done. I am going to be extra one last time and add some light effects and a gradient map. Before you deselect your rectangle, create a layer above all the other layers. Go to the gradient tab. Clip Studio has a bunch of already pre-installed gradients, so I'm just going to use this midday sky one. Just drag it across the screen and then lower the opacity and play around with the blending modes. I like to use soft light overlay and sometimes multiply, but I'm going to use soft light for this one. I wanted it a little brighter since this is early in the day and this gradient map pretty much accomplishes that. just realized that since this is a mirror his reflection should be like right here but I'm too lazy to do that so please pretend um, that there is that he okay just pretend pretend with me for a second okay just pretend this is him okay thank you and here is the final and finished result. I usually don't do all of this when I'm making a chapter because one chapter would take me 30 years. I hope that was easy to understand. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Now we can move on to pre-colored backgrounds. You'll find pre-colored backgrounds under image material in the asset store. So click detail, image material. The great thing about these is that you don't have to color, but there's a couple downsides. The first being that 90% of the ones in the store, or at least the ones I see, are paid. And then the other bad part is that there's no line art, so you can't do what we just did with matching your line art to your character. That being said, there are still ways to make your panels look good, and it is still less time consuming than the first method. If you do have a little bit of money to spend on your comic, I highly recommend this artist. They have a bunch of backgrounds, really, really nice, high quality backgrounds that I've bought some of. I will link their page down in the description. I'm going to be using the same panel for this. So once you find the background, drag it into the scene like we did before. This is the one I'm using and I'm just going to Adjust it until I like it. I'm going to change the colors a bit. The other thing with these backgrounds is that you can't 100% control the colors or the perspective, but they save me so much time so I really can't even complain. We're going to use the same exact method as we did before except you skip the coloring part and just go straight to lighting and shading. So first I'm going to use a gradient map because right now it looks like he was just pasted in, which he was, but we don't want it to look like that. I'm going to use a sunset gradient map and that is already pre-installed with Clip Studio.
adjust the opacity and the blending mode. Next, I'm doing cell shading again like we did before. Since the sun is behind him, I know where the light source is coming from. What I'm going to do is outline him using a soft airbrush. So here's the finished image. From here you can leave it like this but most of the time with these backgrounds I blur them a little bit. So select your background layer, filter, blur, I'm not even going to pronounce this word and embarrass myself. You can check the preview and see how much you want to blur it. And yeah, so this is what it looks like finished. It doesn't look as good as the 3D objects background, but I still like it. And finally, the last background. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what they're technically called. Like I have no idea what to even search to find these, but these are the ones I'm talking about. And I'll link the one I'm using and a couple others in the description. I know that they're supposed to represent a character's mood, so I mostly just use them for the backgrounds of my chibi drawings, since I make those the more expressive ones. But since I'm lazy and sometimes when I'm feeling lazy, I use them for panels like this, so I'm going to show an example. Because his mood is annoyed slash confused, I'm going to use this dark background. And you can honestly stop here, but I'll usually add some small other details. I added these lines so it looks like he was turning around added exclamation mark, question mark, shock, in case you didn't know he was shocked or confused or annoyed, whatever expression and emotion this is, now you know. So I usually just leave it at this. Also, you definitely don't need to download assets for these. Most of them you can make yourself or you can even use a simpler background that I see a lot, which is using a halftone brush. I hope any part of this was useful to you. Let me know if you have any questions or clarifications you want in the comments or other video ideas. I have a couple of really useful time-saving tips for making webtoons. So let me know if you want a video about that or anything else.
I'm thinking of making a Google Sheets spreadsheet with links to assets by category like school assets, background assets, house assets, or something like that that I can easily refer back to because right now my downloaded materials are a mess. So if that's something anyone is interested in, let me know so I can make it shareable when I make it. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. They have a bunch of backgrounds, really, really nice, high quality backgrounds. If you do have a, I would recommend this artist.